Hi everybody, it's 314 React here and today we are jumping back in time again to the NVIDIA demos and this time we're going to the earliest demo on the list which is Lightning, released January 1st 2000. So I'm doing these out of order and I just thought this one looks really cool, it's really simple. It's only 3 megabytes, it's DirectX 7 for the GeForce 2 and it was used to create realistic lightning and sparks on a metal plate to demonstrate real-time lighting and per pixel lighting. So this is back in DirectX 7, so it's still fixed function, but it's got some of the more advanced techniques and technologies that the GeForce 2 had. You can read a little bit more about it here on Tom's hardware back in April 2000, and you can see here there's the transform engine, the lighting engine, the setup engine, the rendering engine, and there's the new shading processor which provides the per pixel effects, the NVIDIA shading rasterizer with a number of pixel pipes outputs, and what that allowed was seven pixel operations in a single pass on each of the four pixel pipes. So back then that was a hell of a lot of pixel rendering power. You got the base texture, per pixel bump mapping, per pixel diffuse lighting, per pixel specular lighting, colored fog, ambient light, and alpha transparency. And these were called the hyper texel pipelines, which sounds turn the millennium awesome. And here's a picture of a GeForce 2 with the heatsink and fan removed from it. Really, really nice. Absolutely beautiful. I remember looking at these in catalogs way back in the day and just being mesmerized by this kind of thing. Really want to get my hands on a GeForce 2 one day. But for now, let's dive in to the lightning demo and check out some bump mapping, per pixel lighting, and some really turn the millennium retro 3D stuff. Now this is one of the trickier ones to run because it uses a 16-bit setup installer, Install Shield 5, so it won't install on modern operating systems. So what you have to do is use something like 7-zip to unpack all of the files from within the installer. Then if you go to PC Gaming Wiki, there is an Install Shield 5 32-bit generic installer. And what you can do is download that, drop that in, and then what you do is run that new setup exe, which is 32-bit, and then it should unpack all of the stuff here and let you install the Lightning demo. The other thing I had to do was go into the graphic settings of Windows and ensure that it was using the NVIDIA GeForce card on my laptop, the RTX 3060, because I'll otherwise it wants to use the AMD Radeon inbuilt graphics on the laptop and that can have some incompatibility with these older Nvidia demos. But once that's all done and installed you're left with this Lightning 000419 EXE. Now this is really interesting because all of the other demos we've looked at so far have had different files within here, the textures, programs, batch files to run them, whereas this is literally just 
an exe so i'm guessing everything is packed into this exe two megabytes but what you can do is open it up in 7-zip and you can see there's some data here data our data text some sort of source thing here group icon lightning icon that's just obviously the icon for the exe wave not really sure what these are and then under here png it looks like you've got bump maps textures some smaller details for the spark particles the icon here probably drag that out and view it yeah there you go that's just an ico file uh, what we can try and do is open this walls bump file with gimp and yes it is so you can actually get a look at the file structure just by opening the exe up with 7-zip and extracting stuff out so we can get somewhat of a deeper look at how this works so this is the bump map for the wall so i've extracted all those files out and here we are in gimp which is of course a image editor so group icon it shows it's a unknown file type these are all obviously going to be pngs so let's try and open up instructions oh okay that's what it is the instructions are literally just a texture that gives you the in-game help text when you press the h key the rest of these files you should just be able to open up as well it's interesting that the pngs are thought that would have been tgas that's what they are on the other ones so you got the walls bump you got the walls texture which is there you go transparency for the png must be before they implemented tgas which i believe can handle transparency as well got the spark the small spark Look at that, that's so old school. Got the plate bump map, and then you've got the plate standard texture. And then you've got the lightning, which is, uh, again, just the texture, not any sort of real time generated particle or anything like that. That's how old school this is. So that's really cool to see that. Let's see if we can open up some of the other files. Now, of course, I should have realized this sooner. If the PNGs are gonna be the textures, the icons are the icons. The waves are obviously going to be wave files for the sounds. So that took me way too long to figure that out. So what I've done is to start opening them up in Audacity. And you can open them up and you can hear what they sound like. So that's just the background sound. This is the bounce sound. This is the click on sound. This is the lightning sound. And this is the spark sound. So it's quite rudimentary and it uses, like I said, PNGs for the textures, whereas the other ones seem to use TGAs. So you've got the WAV files, the group icon, the icon, and then you have data, our data, and text. So if we can extract these out, text we may be able to open with Notepad++. Uh, nope. So our data is probably the exe itself, and then data has some readable text in it. A PNG resource, some instructions for the GPU it looks like, and some other things that I think just get spat out as error messages. So yeah, some human readable stuff. The rest of it will all be compiled instructions and the rest is, yeah, either comments in the code that are just stored as readable or errors that need to be printed out if things go wrong with the program. It's not too much to look into there, really. So yeah, even though it is all just one EXE, you can actually unpack the EXE with 7-zip and get kind of an idea of how it works. But of course, there's no shader files or anything like that to read because this is DirectX 7, it's a fixed function. So no programmable shaders. You're just using the functions that exist in the hardware that are exposed by the DirectX 7 API and there's no programmability about it. Anyway. That's enough of exploring all of that. Let's dive in to the lightning demo itself. Now, interestingly, this doesn't go full screen. It also loads as a smaller window and you have to kind of maximize it up. So it is really old school stuff. You can hear the background noise there. You can see the textures that we've looked at in the background here. And you can press H to get the help screen. So you can toggle the wireframe. You can move the viewpoint with the arrows. And of course, escape is quit. So this is again, the really basic beginning of the NVIDIA demos. The other ones have a lot more controls to them. And there's also no readme of this as well, which is also interesting. And you can also toggle the bump mapping. And just go back to your standard flat diffuse texture. I know there's bump maps for the walls here, but I can't really see them being affected when I turn the bump map off and on. If we put some lightning in by clicking, Yep, you can then see that bump map kicking in. So I think there's kind of a directional light here. You've got the vertex shading here, not fong. Yet yeah, this is pretty much just the diffuse textures here until any lighting hits them. But there is kind of a bit of directional light, I think, here, making this bump map seem bumpy even without any lightning. But when you turn on the lightning, then you really, really see that bump mapping kicking in. 
and it looks absolutely incredible. Now I think, because you've got the sparks there, and I think the sparks are having an impact on the reflection here, I think this is EMBM mapping. So you've got the bump map, which will be perturbing the normals uh, only in one normal direction, which will be upwards because it's a bump map, not a normal map. But you've also got the environment map, which will be, I believe, a sphere map like we saw in the bubble demo, not a cube map. And that also is sampled to give a kind of impression of reflections here, which is why this has a kind of shiny effect look to it as you go around it. And the interesting thing as well is that the sparks and the lightning are also having an effect on it as well. I think it can also pick up lighting and multiple light sources. So there's three things there, and that's why the lightning itself reflects in it, and also the sparks reflect in it as well because they're each their own individual light source. So that really shows off the power of the uh, EMBM bump mapping here, and it looks so good. I mean, this must have just been mind-blowing back in the day. You got the little cool down effect there as the lightning goes around. Then we turn the bump mapping off, you just see how flat it looks. It looks like there's still some element of the lighting itself reflecting. But of course, there's no depth to it, there's no bump to it. It looks really basic. It looks almost like texel based lighting rather than pixel based lighting. You can kind of see the stair steppy effect there. That's also actually present on the bump map version as well. I think the bump map version, you also have a per pixel light with all the bumps going over there. It's kind of like the bump mapping you get in Halo, which makes sense as Halo came out about a year later and was for the GeForce 3 era. But that used programmable shaders. You can also see the multiple vertex reflections here in the ball and the structure. It's really, really impressive for 2000. It's kind of like Doom 3 as well about four years before Doom 3 came out, which is actually the GeForce 6 era by then. So this was one of those demos where it just shows the future of what graphics would have looked like. And I'd love to run this on an actual GeForce 2, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, see how it ran. Another one of those demos that must have been absolutely mind-blowing back in 2000. You can only get the lightning to hit the base plate here. Just love those multiple light effects, it's so cool. But it all pings around and the bouncy particles so good. Again, very, very Halo 1-like. It's got a really spooky vibe to it. It really reminds me of a Borg cube, which is probably partially the inspiration. What we can also do is toggle the wireframe with the W key. You can see all the sparks there. So it looks like they're actual either little bits of geometry, like individual polygons that are getting stretched about, or they're just little sprites that are being stretched about. You can see how they bounce and stretch. But you can still see sort of how the reflections are working in the wireframe. Turn the bump mapping off as well. You kind of see how it makes that lighting model even more basic with the bump map off. But you can still see the vertex shading there. But again, it gives that view of how you can have really lightweight amount of polygons but then have the bump mapping make it look like there's so much more detail than there actually is in the geometry. The interesting thing is you've got these wider polys here and then these smaller little polys in between. don't know why you need the smaller polys. Maybe it's to do with the vertex lighting so that you can actually shade per vertex in here. Otherwise you wouldn't have enough polys to shade on because there is vertex lighting going on here even though we do have per pixel lighting from the EMBM. You can especially tell that on these little spheres here because you need to do little bits of lighting per poly up here so each of those little triangles gets lit rather than per pixel you can kind of see that in the lighting on the spheres there that old school vertex lighting look pre fong shading now since this embm is per pixel i don't know why you couldn't have fong up here maybe that's a different pipeline maybe it just wasn't compatible yet but if you can do per pixel here i don't see why you couldn't do per pixel here so i'm not sure if anyone knows let me know in the comments. It's got that really creepy late 90s, 2000s feel to it kind of thing. Again, like I always say, you'd see in an old computer shop on a computer and be really creeped out and fascinated by it. But yeah, really basic demo, really cool to look at. We also got to look a little bit of how the structure of the directories work in the EXE so you can get kind of an idea of how these things are put together. And it's just a very, very impressive little demo and the very first demo I think that NVIDIA released. 
So hopefully you enjoyed a look into this 25 and a half year old demo. Came out right on the turn of the millennium. Really gave a future look of what graphics could be and indeed would be about four years later with Doom 3, Far Cry and even Halo. So the fact this went from a tech demo to having this tech in a full game in under a year on a console, really impressive. Just shows how fast things were going back then. Leave a like if you like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you ever played this demo on actual old hardware back in 2000, do let me know. Hit subscribe, hit the little bell. There's a new video every week on video games and technology. Hope everyone's staying safe, and I will see you in the next video.